And as a reminder, our four crew members, Mike Hopkins, Victor Glover, Shannon Walker, and Suichi Noguchi, all on board Crew Dragon returning home today. They are monitoring this process, and so they uh, are well aware that we may lose communications with them as soon as within 30 seconds, um, and we will speak with them once we are out of that comms blackout period, again, lasting about seven minutes today. We're standing by for that LOS under 100 kilometers in altitude. And shortly after we begin that uh, communications blackout period, 11.45 p.m. Pacific time, uh, that is when the spacecraft will enter the Earth's atmosphere and begin, you know, sort of its final descent uh, back uh, to a splashdown. Altitude of Crew Dragon now at 90 kilometers. And this view on the right hand side of your screen and Mission Control Hawthorne here in California, teams monitoring the vehicle. Uh, and during this loss of signal point, uh, this communications blackout, they, they won't be able to get telemetry on the vehicle, but Crew Dragon is totally autonomous. So at this point, we are entering that communications blackout period. Uh, this will last approximately seven and a half minutes due to plasma formation around the spacecraft. During this time, no vehicle telemetry is received by mission control or the recovery team, and no external commanding of the vehicle or voice communication is possible. And just as a reminder, Dragon is designed to fly itself and continues to autonomously use Draco thrusters to orient itself during re-entry. Uh, during re-entry, the vehicle will be slowing down from orbital velocity, which is approximately 17,500 17, miles per hour. And the top temperature around Dragon, uh, that Dragon will experience upon re-entry is about 3,500 degrees Fahrenheit. And of course, inside the capsule will not get near that hot. We expect the temperature to raise to about 85 degrees and the astronauts have cool air inside the vehicle as well as inside their suits. Uh, and so we have just entered the time of entry interface. So Dragon is now experiencing uh, the Earth's atmosphere the, for the first time in almost six months. So we are continuing to uh, be in this LOS period. As we mentioned, it should last about seven minutes and that began at 11.43 p.m. Pacific time. So we have about four minutes left of that LOS period uh, and the crew knows that we will be in communication with them on the other side. And, and this has uh, gotta be the, the period where uh, if you followed Bob and Doug's re-entry, they had described Dragon as sort of coming back to life when it re-entered the atmosphere. So uh, again, uh, those temperatures are caused by friction. So, um, you know, the the spacecraft itself is moving at such a high rate of speed that it's it's hitting all these air particles. And so um, it's got to be, um, you know, the vibration levels and uh, the sound has got to be uh, sort of elevated at this point as it continues to go through the Earth's atmosphere. Yeah, and as we mentioned, this is the first time that the vehicles felt this lift and this drag since launch. Um, Gaia atmosphere in space that doesn't exist, and so it's a vacuum and, and uh, haven't been feeling this and, and been able to hear those sounds that uh, you were discussing. So um, it, it's quite a different moment after having six months in microgravity. They will begin to start feeling some Gs, as we mentioned, between three and five Gs upon their re-entry. And uh, we are standing by, it's been about four minutes now since that loss of signal began. That's an estimated seven minutes. The plasma is building up on the outside of the capsule as it continues entering the Earth's atmosphere. The temperatures around the capsule building up to 3,500 degrees Fahrenheit. And this view from our WV-57 aircraft with uh, its thermal imaging cameras, we will be looking for uh, the
crew dragon to come into view and uh, carbon ablator. That is the material that is really shielding the capsule from all of that extreme temperature. And so the, the capsule itself goes in sort of bottom first and um, uh, that lightweight material, oh, and that is uh, just a fantastic shot. That is the dragon re-entering the Earth's atmosphere as it uh, leaves that trail behind. Um, and then again, that, that, that illumination is from all of that heat um, uh, that is building up uh, due to friction of just the re-entry speeds of dragon when it meets the Earth's atmosphere. And that view coming from the boat, Go Navigator. Crew Dragon continuing, as you said, into to enter Earth's atmosphere. So uh, having these two views right now with it being a, uh, a nighttime splashdown, pretty exciting that we're getting uh, two, two good views upon reentry into Earth's atmosphere. So again, a lot of things are happening uh, pretty rapidly here. In about three minutes, the first set of parachutes will deploy. They are drogue chutes, they are conical in nature, and their job is to uh, stabilize and begin sort of the initial uh, deceleration of the vehicle, followed uh, very shortly after by the main parachutes. There are four of them. Dragon, SpaceX, come check. And SpaceX, this is Dragon. Over 4 Gs, 42 kilometers. SpaceX, we have you loud and clear. Expect automated chute deployment. And resilience copies. We are at 40 kilometers, 4.34 on the Gs. That's Commander Mike Hopkins reporting the Gs that they experienced upon reentry. And as you heard, we are now out of that loss of signal portion, meaning the plasma has uh, eroded away enough from the spacecraft. I think my heart skipped a beat as soon as I heard um, <laughs> the too. crew uh, responding back. And uh, you know, one thing I did note as soon as Mike uh, turned on his comms, there was a lot of background noise, and that is sort of uh, you know the the um, after effects of Dragon's re-entry. So this view again from the WB-57 aircraft. Dragon SpaceX, a GPS is converged. Expect nominal altitude for drogue chute deploy. Resilience copies. Nominal altitude for drogue deploy. Crew Dragon Resilience now 30 kilometers over Earth. It's quite a quick drop over that uh, 100 that we saw just a few minutes ago. And now we'll be looking for drogue parachute deploy within the next minute or so at 11.52 p.m. Pacific time, 6.52 GMT. Those two drogue chutes should deploy at 18,000 feet in, alt in altitude. Crew Dragon will be moving approximately 350 miles per hour. Dragon SpaceX, recovery team reports visual. Good news. We're at 20 kilometers. Seats are rotating. SpaceX copies on the seat rotation. And the seats are rotating into the proper landing position. We saw them a little bit more reclined earlier, facing the top of the capsule. And uh, now they are more forward facing towards that side hatch. We also got confirmation that the recovery teams can also now see Dragon coming back. Brace for drogues. Copy, braced for drogues. We are waiting for confirmation that the drogue chutes have deployed. We are expecting them to deploy uh, any minute now. And it looks like those might be our drogue chutes. Visual two chutes. Space 
SpaceX from resilience. We show good droves. SpaceX copies and concurs nominal descent right on two drogues. Uh, continuing to hear good news after good news. Uh, two drogue shoots have deployed. Everything looks nominal and we're slowing the Dragon vehicle down. We are expecting the four main shoots to deploy uh, within the next minute. And those four drogue shoots. Oh, you can see them being pulled out now. Visual on four mains. And resilience copies, and we see a nominal descent rate. SpaceX copies and concern, concurs nominal descent rate. And this view coming from the WB-57, very clear image of those four main parachutes slowing the vehicle down to what will be about 16 miles per hour prior to splashdown just off the coast of Panama City, Florida. If it were daylight, we would have an image of those four meters. beautiful parachutes being orange and white and still getting these incredible views even though we are in a nighttime splashdown. So we are waiting for uh, visuals of splashdown. The Dragon One program had great success with water landing with 20 successful splashdowns over the course of that program, nine of which were carried out by oh. flight proven Dragon spacecrafts. And space side, you've broken, but we show you just under 800 meters, still good descent, right? just under 800 meters from the Earth. That's about half of a mile. And we are tracking splashdown. And 600 meters, and we're showing 10 meters per second on the descent rate, a little higher than now. SpaceX copies. And what a view we have here. Even though it's nighttime, uh, we have some great visuals uh, of Dragon there with his four main chutes deployed, uh, slowly coming back to Earth. Splashdown is scheduled for just a few minutes from now. Meters. Now just a quarter of a mile away from splashdown, and that splashdown time is scheduled for 11.57 p.m. Pacific time. And SpaceX, we show nominal descent rate, 200 meters, brace for splashdown. SpaceX copies, brace for splashdown. Seconds away from splashdown, everything nominal aboard Crew Dragon Resilience returning to Earth. And there are the boats starting to chase after Dragon um, to begin their recovery operations as soon as Dragon lands. And I don't know if you can hear the applause. But we have visual confirmation of the Crew-1 Resilience and Capsule. From Resilience. Uh, that is excellent news. We are splashed down. We sh the pyros have fired or water. SpaceX copies and concurs. We do she main cut as well. So again, you heard the applause. Uh, the crew one capsule has returned. Um, and we have successful splashdown. The main chutes have also cut as well. The fast boats are now making their way towards the capsule to begin the recovery operations. Again, that first boat is going to um, start to inspect the capsule and make sure that there isn't any residual uh, toxic fumes in the air. Dragon, on behalf of NASA and the SpaceX teams, we welcome you back to planet Earth and thanks for flying SpaceX. For those of you enrolled in our frequent flyer program, you have earned 68 million miles on this